What we have a problem with, what me and Coca have a problem with, and rest above the law, we always had a problem with, is people not writing us into the history. That's not them to do, because people know this story. Yeah. People just don't know the story, but people in the industry know what happened. On the spot, at the spot. The spot, Soto. With the big homie Nick, we at the spot, Soto. We at the spot, Soto. Spot, Soto. On the spot, at the spot, Soto, Seattle. Man, pull out your blunt, grab your drink, get your notepad. Cause it's a lot of game. We over here on the spot at the spot, man. Go like, comment, and subscribe because we got a historical motherfucking interview for y'all today. You know what I'm saying? To some of y'all, y'all may know who's sitting over here on the panel, man. You feel me? But if you don't know, you know, I'm gonna let these brothers introduce themselves because I'm not, I don't, I'm not even have the righteous moment to tell y'all <laughs> who they are, man. Because y'all <laughs> might not know, man. You feel me? Do your homework, though. It so, is. man, we're gonna start over there at the end, bro. You know what I'm saying, man? You go ahead and tell us, man. Man, thanks. Thanks for having us on the platform. I'm known as the legendary cocaine, a.k.a. the most featured collaborative artist on the planet. Wow. Yo, I'm known as Code 187, a.k.a. Big Hutch, Massa Musa, the creator of G-Funk, from the notorious ass above the law. I dig that. That nigga on the end don't rap, man. That nigga just <laughs> over there, man. <laughs> no, he, would, he would beatbox, huh? I know what he do rap. <laughs> Send it. Oh move it. Because my co-host, Mr. McGlover, man, you know what I'm saying? And man, good old St. Nick, man. You know what I'm saying? Again, go like, comment, and subscribe. You know, we ain't going to bullshit. We're going to jump straight into this motherfucker, man. You feel me? Did you ever think that what you said in the rap song was going to be hold against you in the court of fucking law? No. Um... I, because I think we came up in a time where, you know, what you said was your freedom, you know, like, like you didn't, you know, okay, how can you really say that I'm wrong for saying something when I can freely speak in an art form? You know, we start moving things into the aspect of art, you know, I think it's more of like um, how you looking at it outside that spectrum, you know what I mean, of hood shit, you yes, know what sir. I mean? Like, you're not really, I don't think nobody is silly enough to, uh, dumb enough to, yeah. you know, put something that's on records that's going to indict them. I think what's fucked up is the fact that they actually can try to book you for something that may be a story. Hmm. It may be, you may be second, third party. It might not even be you. You know, and they use it as an in an investigation. But I think, honestly, I think that's another reason why another like put us under, you know, under like some kind of tail, you know, like the track us basically. Yeah. Yeah. You know, listen to our music, the track us. Because when we was coming up, they did, I mean, look at the shit. We I mean, we started gangster rap. We were part of the, the evolution of gangster rap, which is that back then it was 
um, reality reality rap. So everything we talked about was primarily real in the first or second third party situation. So I think that's ill, man, when you when you actually look at it in real time. Real time. Because you don't really know who did it. Now it's more fucked up when these dudes do say I was on Third Street hanging out with these dudes and we shot this dude. Well, you're tall like, on yourself. You're tall on yourself. Straight connected you know. to the fucking Because doctor. we would always think about when we made records back then, we would always talk in the second or third party. We talk yeah. about this happened. Like if you look at the record like Boys in the Hood, he was talking about what they was doing at the park. He wasn't saying, you know, he kind of easy wasn't saying that. So when we started making records the same way, we were more so talking about the politics of the hood, like how it rolls. Like we weren't specifically reporters. saying names and shit. Man, before, you know, before we go and dag in there, man, where you brothers from, man? Where y'all up out of? <laughs> we from Pomona. We're from Pom Pomona. Pomona. Yeah. So the last Pomona. city in L.A. County. There yeah. it is. Yes, sir. That's it. The P. last stop. You know, you know what's up. He, oh, he was yeah. on that blade. <laughs> 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 you whole boulevard, the blade. <laughs> man, yeah, yeah man. we from the last stop, man. But, man. you know, we was connected. The cool thing about us is, you know, our crew and everything, we was connected with South Central really heavy, you know, okay. with South Central and Compton. So we were like to, 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 to link with somebody from Compton to put our music out and then be connected through South Central from hustling and then being from Pomona. We're like the trifecta. You know, Above the Law became the, you know, we were the sound of gotcha. that culture. You know, the hustling culture, the gotcha. you know, the, the pimping culture, the gotcha. banging culture. We talked about it from every spectrum. So, yeah, we from Pomona, though. Yeah, we came so, up that way. Was you yeah. brothers too young to be at the Carolina West and Speakeasy and all that? Or was y'all, man? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, we're a little younger than that. I, I was. My mom and damn part. You always want to make a nigga older than what they are. <laughs> yeah. we, we, yeah. yeah, yeah, we're a little younger. Yeah, we're a little younger. We Carolina. knew about it. That was, in, that was in the car wash days. Yeah, exactly. Mm, yeah. Man, man, no, man. So, man. <laughs> Real what? Yeah, you know, but. We gonna uh, panel man. We start man. We go man. What's the first year, man? What's the first year you go ahead and drop that first rap? Oh, um, officially, you know, our first not, record. Not, not officially, uh, just that that first time when you knew like, rather if it was a talent show, rather if it was on the corner, where you just was like, you know what, I'm fucking with. Oh this. yeah, this was this was probably eighty four. 85, yeah. When I first started loving rap, because we grew up musicians, you know. Oh, rappers was out in 84. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, what? you're talking about, um, shoot, man, Run DMC, LL Cool J, um, uh, Eric B and Rock Who on the West? Dropped. Jungle Brothers. On the West, Ice it was T. only, the the first was Ice-T. It was and then and then you had like L.A. Dream Team. wasn't too short, too short wasn't in too there? Too short, not. That's, late, that's uh, a late 80s. What about uh, yeah. Blowfly? Blowfly was out. That's yeah. 80. Okay. That's okay. like 80. Okay, yeah. okay. You know, but LA Dream Team is like 83, 84. Yeah, yeah, remember? yeah, so yeah, yeah. That, the, that's the kind of the only thing that we had that we could say was like real West Coast LA hip hop. And then you had the underground tapes, Mixed Master Spade, Toddy T. Yeah. They came out in 84, you, 85 you, with Battle Ram and all had, that. You also had Jewel. Who sung, ladies and gentlemen, on yeah, LA yeah, Dream yeah. Team. Rest yeah, in peace, Jewel. Rest in peace, Jewel. You know, because uh, she's definitely, you know, a female. So, wait, 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 wait. Well, yeah. 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 She was well, yeah. She was sing, sing on the Dream Team. Yeah. On the all yeah. the way She sung Rockberry, all of yeah. mm -hmm. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know we put a lot of emphasis on the dude, but it was some it was some yeah, no, 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 in there no, doing no, no, man. Shots yep. off to Jewel up out of Chicago, Rest in peace. Man. Yeah, Rest, Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rise That's our sister. Never knew that. Rise That's our sister, too, man. Yeah. Damn, so she powerful. go back that far? Yeah, she yeah. started with us at Ruthless. She was she was a part of the beginning of Ruthless, all of that. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, Jewel been around. She It's not just Death Row. She been around that whole like, thing, damn. you know. Yeah. In the you beginning. said the dream team, though. That's right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So when you looking at, like my man, like we say, you looking at L.A. hip-hop, like it really wasn't a lot. You had Egyptian Lover. You know that. Uncle we had Jam's LA Dream Army. Team. You had Uncle Jam's Army. You had the record crew, which Dre and Yella came up out of. And shout out to Lonzo, the Godfather. Basically, you know, he was the first to late. He was the first to lace basically all of us up. Okay. Yeah. In a sense, because he was kind of like that that route through, you know what I'm saying? And then through through that, you know, that's where we came up through, through Law and Dre and Easy gotcha. when they formed Ruthless Records. Gotcha. So yeah. So that was our, you know, because at that time we didn't have no it wasn't a rap scene in L.A. Y'all know it wasn't yeah. a rap scene in L.A. It was just really. basically putting out records like Ice was putting out records and all the other things. And, and, and all the Rhodium stuff, remember the Rhodium shit was like Toddy and them. Toddy T. Toddy T. Spade. Rhodium. Rhodium, yeah. boy. King yeah. T. Rhodium tapes. You know, King T. You know, DJ Pooh. L.A. You know, L.A. Posse Records. You know, Breeze. You know, all those dudes. That's what we came up under. So, and that's like 86, 87. So, so. You, would you say what the Rhodium and what the Compton Swap meet? Yeah, yeah, I, absolutely. That's, that's the essence of that's our street 
that that's like our mixtape era. Like gotcha. you know, we were getting those rodium tapes in the comp um records from Comp to Swap Me. Rodium was like yeah. slossing. Man, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Man. Yeah. 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 Shit, I got yeah. my first surviving knife on that movie. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't call it mixtapes, it was rodium. It was rodium tapes, yeah. Remember? Oh, okay. Remember okay. the rodium. And remember that's how, you know, if you if y'all can remember, remember um Cube, all them, they were doing the mixtapes first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then they formed and then put, you know, NWA and the posse together and then then it kind of snowballed from there, the creation of Ruthless Records. So, man, where, where were you at, man, when uh, KJLA hit? Because um, I would think that you guys were damn near in that mix, getting ready to go in on that. Because when I think of that, I think of Sunday. If it's Saturday Sunday, night. That Dr. was it. Yeah, yeah you're talking about Take, what, still, Dr. Rock, was it? K-Day yeah. was really was it, was more see, prominent. <laughs> Yep. Still in the tape, yeah, putting yeah. some tissue yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. Oh, yeah. It. <laughs> oh, my yeah. yeah. God. That was Saturday Night Hip Hop. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yeah. Rock. Yeah. We used to, uh, um, KGFJ. Okay, KGFJ. Yeah. AM, mm -hmm. too. Um, AM. Yep. Yeah. And then K-Day. And then, and then, when, and then once K-Day came mm -hmm. in, you know, we used to fix our antennas mm -hmm. and shit to try to listen to yeah, it. Yeah, Greg Mac the Rap. Yeah, Mac Attack. Mac, Mac Attack. Attack. Um, you know, K-Day Mix Masters. Yeah, you know, and that's when it took off, you know. Huh. Our first record was played on K Day. You know, we, okay, we didn't get yep. it because there was no FM awesome. that played hip hop. And it's funny because when we went up there, we bought the Real to Real of Murder Rap, which was our first single in 1989. Okay. And Greg Mack put it on, carted it that back then you had to put use carts. Yeah. You know, they they rolled it off the Real to Real. He he copied it onto the player. cart yeah, yeah, yeah. and put it in there and then it go in the air. So yeah. And that was um, you know, K Day was up that hill off Alvarado. You go up that long ass hill and uh, <laughs> You walk in there and they just put you on. That was the dopest shit about K Day, because you basically could walk off the street and put it on, you know, and, and hey, put your record. Let me on. ask you a question. Hey, how'd you tap in with Easy though? Oh, that, that's the streets. Through, it, through the music. That, yeah, that's or through, was it the streets. That's through the streets. Yeah. Okay, man, yeah. The streets plug niggas in too, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, you know, we was hustling. Um, my man Gomac, shout out to Gomac from Above the Law. Um, his brother's Laylo. Um, a good friend of mine, rest in peace, Dooley. Um. We should hustle together and his brother E, and they were good friends with Gomac. And um Gomac um introduced us to Laylaw, his brother, and at the time he was like really, really tight. Him and Easy came up in the streets together. We shot him to live like hustlers demo tape. And uh him and Dre dug it, and they were building Rufus Rex at the time. And um shit, that's how we got on. They loved it. the four song demo we had, and then from there we just took flight. You already you had know? the demo ready. My bad, bro. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, five, no, no. it was like four or five songs. But we had all the whole album written out. We had like we had like eighty percent of our first album done before we even met them. You know. Did you used to keep your demos on you? Or was it just like you knew you was Oh yeah, because you know, we was hustlers. So when yeah. we was hustling in the streets. It was all about going around, you know, we go to big parties or picnics or whatever, just bump for people to never know who you was going to run into in L.A., you yeah. know. And um, fortunately, um, when they were in the middle of the um, Straight Outta Compton tour, um, he Easy was interested. He was like, hey, man, you know, I want to fuck with y'all. Y'all selling dope. Y'all out there wilding out. Y'all going to be in prison by the time I get home. So he was we loving that shit, though. Like, yeah, he was loving it. So we shot yeah. out. So we shot out to, on the tour. And um, chopped it up with him, saw the whole layout. He was like, we'll say we was cool. So then we started shutting down, you know, and then from there, shit, 1989, we finished the album, came out in 1990. And that's how we met Easy, just from the street, just to people being connected in the streets. And then after that, then we um, we put Coke on, you know, Coke was my cousin. That's what, that was the day. Yeah, Coke okay, was my cousin. Okay, okay, Coke was okay, my cousin. That, that's what and I he was, was rapping in the streets as well. And uh, when we signed, um, we just said, okay, they asked me, you know, Eric was like, what y'all got? What y'all got? What's the, you know, so I got my cousin, you know, and then Law, Law was like, okay, let's take him in and do a demo. We did, what, a three, four song demo? Three, three, four, did a three, four song demo at Jimmy High Tracks in Pomona. Everybody from Pomona, that, that's the only studio to go to. That's like you pay your money and, and really get an official record done. And um, Easy, Dre loved it. And that was it, you know, the birth of cocaine. So, <clears throat> so I mean, I don't mean to cut you And that's off. 90, yeah. <laughs> so you. you Y'all, you know, man, y'all people's cousins and shit like that, right? Absolutely, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, church, church back there. Y'all go back with church. All that church, and you know, we study uh, Christianity and Islam is in okay. our family. Mm -hmm. Both. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you know, man. Because man, let's let's be real. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got the most distinctive fucking voice <laughs> in the world. Man, I thought that nigga was 
George Clinton, nigga. I'm That's like, man, a brother law be having George Clinton on all that. <laughs> yeah, when I was young, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because <laughs> I grew up on that George Clinton, but I'm like, damn. No, nah, so- what, it, what it is is, you know, I was I was playing with a lot of different styles in the early 80s. Not really taking it serious, but in, like in the mid-80s, like 1980, 85, um, he originally had a group called Wizards of Rock. A lot of people don't know. He came up with a record in 1985 or 86 called We Got a Good Thing. You can go look it up. Champion record. So before Above the Law, you know, I would tell, you know, Hutch, man, 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 that shit y'all doing over there is dope. (laughs) You know what I mean? I said, man, I need to get in. Because we, like Hutch said, we already come from a musical background. My father, Jerry Long, from Motown Records. Records, yeah. Uh, Uncle Willie Hutch. Yep. My dad's Shut a writer. The and fuck yeah, man. that's who oh, his name yeah. Willie Hutch. That's I found Uncle Willie Hutch. Get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. we already, it, 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 yeah, we already, that's cool. you know, <laughs> we already kind of like had the, the yeah. cheat code. Exactly. And, and yeah. um, mm-hmm. back then, you know, it was a different type of style. So he was called B Boy Hutch. Yeah, because the era. And, yeah, and I was called yeah. B Boy J Golden. Mm-hmm. That was the style that we came, and then. He went did his own thing. I did my own thing, and then we we connected uh, back in the beginning of 1989. And he said, "Man, I walked into the room, 1289 Raw Street in Pomona, California. Remember, like it's yesterday." And I yep. walked in to see Murder Rap. Back mm-hmm. then, they had the numbers on the television and big ass heavy cassette tapes that we used to get for Bernie Grubman's, right? Yeah, big so, reels. I was like, damn, because I was digging N.W.A. when I heard them in 87, 88, because I could relate to their type of style of music. It was the same thing that we were doing. So Hutch came in the room after I seen the video. He said, man, he said, this is it, man. We we with N.W.A. and all them. I said, I see. I didn't know. (laughs) Y'all was above the law. I heard the name, but I didn't know my cousin was (laughs) above the law. Yeah. So I walked into the room. He said, man, now it's time. You know, kind of like, you know, the movie Kung Fu when it says snatch the pebble out of my hand. You know what I mean? I snatched that motherfucker out of his hands. He said, I got a name for you because you dope. You got different styles. I'm going to challenge you. I want you to do Rick James. I want you to do George Clinton. And I want you to bust. You cocaine. Yep. Because he, cause, you, you had cause he already said, warning, listening may become addicting to your music. So yep. that's how we're going to structure mm-hmm. you. That when you hear cocaine, it's like you on cocaine. That's right. So you already an A&R mindset, yeah. young like yeah, that. Yeah, because it, it's it, because how we developed above the law. Like me, DJ Chaos, was in Wizards of Rock and another partner uh, that we had named Sam. And he went off and got into business and started doing a family. And me and Chaos were still hustling. So I just took a play out of me and his book. You know, when me and him, rest in peace, came. KMG, my brother KMG, when we came together, we had a concept. We, you know, we said, okay, we gone, we hustling, we street hustlers. You know, we had a dope, you know, back then, remember they was doing a dope crew. So we yeah. had a dope crew, HBC, Hustle Beyond Control. Okay. Like you had the Freeway Boys, you had Third World, you had, you know, all that. So, but we was like, okay, we come out, we want to have like a concept about how we hustle and everything. So we created Above the Law. And then when my name, my name was originally, I was going to use cocaine, okay. but I still battled. You know, when I was coming up, like whenever we go to the picnics and all that as D-Boys, I would battle. So there was like people know me as Hutch, but uh, DJ Chaos, my, my brother, he was like, you know, you be killing them off like a murderer. Like I was like, Whoa. and he was like, like 187, like a murderer. I was like, OK, all right, cool. That, that sounds dope. When we put the C-O-L-D behind it and put the U-M, because remember when we used to do graffiti, Good, yeah, they put the U-M, 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 U-M. Exactly. Yeah. So make you say seven. You know, and that's how I came up. So when it came to developing cocaine, us as above the law as a unit, we already had a mind to like develop a new thing. You know what I mean? So I won't say it's an A&R thing. I just think he was, you know, we always call him the fifth Beatle, basically. So it's like a part of us, you know, like so we said. Yeah. So we had to create a monarchy of somebody that's a part of, you know, above the law and cocaine. It makes it together. together. You know what I'm saying? Real Living tough. like hustlers that we used to move work, you know. And it's great kind from of a thing. smart business. There you go. Business so, move. Not, I'm like saying that. I didn't have an A&R hat on. I just had the vision no, from no, what no, we no, developed. No. For, intelligence. But that's what it was. But that's what it was. Yeah, really. You know? And at that time, that's what the universe that's right. was, 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 was bringing. Was, yeah. You know, once I did the three-song demo at Jimmy Hot Track Studio, um, 
we solicited through through Hutch and uh, Larry Lay Lutman. Mm -hmm. Lay Law. <laughs> um, Easy heard him was like blown back. He's like, damn. He was, yeah. Uh, he was already blown black by Above the Law, but he got a double dose of the oh, Mega yeah, Flex. Oh, yeah, and yeah, it was yeah. just like, man, he was like, shit. shit what you I got my George Clinton. Moment, huh? I got my whatever he is. He cocaine. He and, dope. They, and I think the coldest thing that we did for, for us when you looked at Rufus Records, Rufus Records was really only three entities at the time. It was only Easy e you know, because JJ Fad, they had their success. Yeah. You know, with that with that record with Super Sonic, shout out to JJ Fad, because they you know basically kept the lights on at it until we started yeah. developing what we all started yeah. developing. But it really, on a grand scale of like people really having an identity of Ruthless Records, only was NWA and Easy E, and then the DOC. Now, when we came in, we bought another level to, and that made it be a bona, bona fide label Maybe. with Above the Law, Michelle LA, and Cocaine. When we came, that made a complete label. So you got every, you have something outside of NWA and Easy e You got the DLC, you got Above the Law, you got Cocaine, you got Miss L.A. So now we're like a young Motown at that time. Yeah, we're off top. Come on now. And then everybody was their own entity. So when you looked at what we were doing, what's crazy part about it is that, and we didn't even know because we was hella young, shout out to MC Ren because me and Ren was talking about this, like, man, he said, you know, we was developing that music, how young we were and how short period of time it was, you know, because at the time, we're talking about when Cube was still there. Yeah. We're not talking about when he left. Then we're talking about a whole nother, a, a resurgent when he left, you know what I mean? So, if it wasn't for Above the Law and Cocaine coming there, I don't think we would have had that momentum as a label at that time. Well, you know, First and foremost, <clears throat> I'm gonna keep it straight. Genetics. Okay. See, yeah. <laughs> as I'm sitting here, man, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Willie Hutch. Oh, so yeah. you gotta, you, oh, yeah. you, 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 you gotta, you gotta understand, bro. I'm, I'm a music, <laughs> so it's like, right, 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 right. If you, right. if, if hey, to, to the youngsters, if go do your homework, man. The Mac, man, Foxy yeah, Brown, Brown, man. Yeah. You feel me, Willie? Oh, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll, man, I'll, I'll be, be there. ABC I, for yeah. my brother. That's the original poster from 1973, man. There from you the go. There you go. Wow. One of the original posters and everything like that. I keep right there with everything, man. Mm -hmm. I love that. Hey, to this day, on my Apple iPhone, I got that album on the thing. There you go. Yeah. Hey, man. Rest in peace, Max Julian, man. So, yeah, that was so, my own. And my dad man. was his writer. He was a writer. He was a writer and a composer with him. So yeah. my dad, is Richard, Richard. Hutch, he wrote for the Jacksons. He wrote for the Miracles, yeah. Commodores. So keep going. It know? makes sense. <laughs> Genetic wise, intelligence, the sound, the yeah. movement. Right. It was gonna happen. Right. right. DNA. It's in the right. DNA. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's like if you're if you're a warrior, you're gonna miss in your DNA. And the cool thing, I think the I think the cooler part was like when we brought what we bought to Easy, yeah. Easy didn't have an issue with it. Easy just said, Okay, I think it's dope. Let's get behind it. You know, he was a young executive. He didn't have to. He could have ridiculed it. He could like catch do. And I would say nowadays everybody's an expert. Okay, we made legendary we made legendary records, so people say we never call ourselves legends, but they say that we're legendary. But yeah. and we didn't even have a clue. We just wanted to do something cool. And Eric was like, Okay, let's do that. You know what I mean? And and now, you know, me and him as written and produced, as writers and producers, we produce people that are in a rock and roll hall of fame. Hmm. So it, it's funny because it I don't know if that's DNA, but you know, you two parties have to come together. Someone has to believe in who you are. You know, and then you have to deliver. The DNA delivered. You know what I mean? Off top. But, but Easy and, believed and in we, us. Um, Eric believed in us, though, you know. Yeah, with and that we, vision. Um, well, you got to look at, you know, the simple fact that here's a man that, you know, when you think about NWA, you think about Bone Thugs and Harmony. Absolutely. You think about the creators of G-Funk. Yep. And you think about one of the biggest persons that's in the tech game. Is will is will I am? Yeah, which were, absolutely. Which Black Eyed Peas was originally on Ruthless Records and discovered clan. by Ruthless. That's Records. the Ad Band and clan. the Ad Band yeah. Clan. That's the Ad Band Clan. Yeah, so Black it's Peas like when that, you yeah. when you think about it, how do you mobilize what you need to do? Well, you have to mm -hmm. learn by those people that led by example. Absolutely, and and easy led by example, not a sample. He didn't. He he really. He didn't a, yeah, he did. Yeah, he, he did. really showed us. That's why. That's a part of our, our, us being where we are today Absolutely. is because we learn from the best. Yep. You know what I mean? He decided to put up his hustle money. Yeah. He the one that decided to go ahead and take chances on cash from Pomona. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't about 
you know, him dissing Cube or Cube dissing him. He yeah. told Cube, look, man, we got to have more than this. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the lot of yeah. reasons people don't know why Cube left, which he probably ain't going to say nothing, but it's partially a part of above the law. That's right. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and Easy wanted to mobilize the and expand the label. Yeah, he so wanted a lot of to look like a that. young Motown. He didn't want to look like a, a bunch of extensions of N.W.A. Yeah. at yeah. the time. So he right. wanted to put so, us out first. Yeah. You know, so which, easy, kinda, easy was an incredible. We always mention him, you know, because he don't get the credit. Does it? Yeah. You know, ain't no way in hell easy is driving down the street, crying, looking at a, another nigga's bulletin board. Yeah, he's not. Let that's me, not his character. Let me ask both that's not a question character. real quick. Mm-hmm. What y'all say? Can y'all say that G Funk started mm-hmm. on, on Ruthless? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We Black create, Mafia Life. It's like when we when Black we, Mafia Life album. I remember, I remember the day. I remember the days. You got to realize. Up on the rhyme, but I mean, really, just well. Go ahead. Living Let's like say. hustlers <laughs> came out. Black Mafia Life and, and and Uncle Sam's Curse sound totally different from that. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and Hutch was rolling down. You know, this was right before the riots and all that yeah, stuff. Absolutely. And it was a song that we was working on. All you stank bitches, I don't have no time. Because yeah, I got pimp, pimping on yeah. pimp my mind all Real the nice. time. <laughs> yeah, Pimp Mama. Clinic. Pimp and that clinic. was the beginning. Yeah. We didn't know what we wanted to call it and this and that. And KM, KMG, rest in peace, was like, you know, we're going to do this G-Funk thing. And yep. we were all together. And Hutch said, mm-hmm. I'm going to bring the music out of it and and Kev and Hutch mm-hmm. along with the writers yeah. you know Chaos mm-hmm. Go-Mac. and Gomac yeah. and Layla mm-hmm. y'all gonna be the sound of it that's right Yeah. and back then you know in 1989 because you know my grandmother was wasn't feeling so good and I, I came to stay with Hutch well also Warren G came to stay with Hutch because mm. Dr. Dre didn't want you know, for some reason, well, like remember man, him and him and Michelle had just got Michelle new house. A just got a new house. They don't want nobody stamp. So Dre called Hutch. Was like, man, my brother whoop de whoop. Well, he didn't call me. He's right there with me in the studio. Oh yeah, right, <laughs> a- absolutely. Because we was mixing, living like hustlers. Remember, so my point like is, hustlers. is yeah. that Warren G, <laughs> me and Warren G stayed with us in 1989. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? So all the elements of G Funk and the influence. Years later, you could see who it had influence on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because a lot of times, you know, a lot of people didn't know, you know, they would credit it, you know, Dre and credit it Snoop and credit which a lot done of people. G-Funk, which which, right. which is which cool. Done which is cool. Yeah. Which is cool. We, we, but he didn't create you know, it. He done it. He didn't yeah. create it. He didn't create it. That's a you know what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. And we were like, um, we were basically, you know, setting off to do music, and we didn't think the influence would be. A phenomenon like P Funk was. Absolutely. We were just doing music because it's embedded in our DNA and this is what we do. Well, you know what I mean? See, for me, I just wanted us to have a different sound at Ruthless. So when I decided to start doing it that way, slowing the beats down, having Coca, me and Kev coming to singing on top of it, bringing harmony and, and melody and chords and all that stuff to it. Cats wasn't doing that. It was more boom and bap and a rap. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah, if you yeah, talking yeah. gangster shit, still was boom. It wasn't like melody and singing and this. And so with me showing everybody that in our circles, you know, um, which everything from our era is all influence, you know, and it's all in-house influence. So we were all one click. So... When Warren did it, you know, um, um, when it when it transferred over to the development of Death Row, like through the chronic, you know, remnants of G Funk on the chronic, we didn't have a problem with that. You know, when Warren did it, Warren come, all those people come out of our camp. You yeah. know, Snoop comes out of our camp. We the first person that laced Snoop up. Two one three came to us first. Came to above the law mm-hmm. first. It came to the above the law camp. What happened yeah, was, audition. yeah, when Dre decided to leave. Um, Everyone kind of wanted to leave with Dre. Well, the only people that were contractedly stuck at Ruthless was Warren G, Nate Dogg, and Snoop. So they were able to go do things with Dre. Now, when Dre was starting to develop them, Dre came to me and told me, like, hey, I'm thinking about doing records with him. Like, I know you had him. Is that cool? Because back then, everything was about, you know, valid, you know, like you got to go to your boy and yeah. Respect. Yeah, respect. you know, respect. So I was like, yeah, I think the kid can go. From there, shoot, deep cover drop. We were on the deep cover soundtrack, yeah, okay. which shows you, which show you, all were in 
the same circles. We was managed by Suge first. Mm-hmm. Us and DOC was managed by Suge first. Was y'all ever then Dre, to then leave ruthless. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to leave with Dre because when we came, what happened was it wasn't a discrepancy with Easy, it was the discrepancy with Jerry Heller. You know, because no one thought management, we thought the management meant was suspect. Yeah. You know, so we, and, and Suge exposed all of that. Yeah. You know, Suge was the first to come. He like, nigga, y'all think he's already dope? Come on, y'all. Well, he was just at the point that he was like, shit ain't right. Yeah. Y'all exploding, everybody's exploding over here, but y'all still getting paid what y'all's getting paid when y'all first walked through the doors in 88, 89. You know what I mean? <laughs> now it's 02, 03. Like, you're supposed to be having da 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 da. You know what I mean? So they exercised developing Death Row, and they were like, well, we want to take Miss LA to DOC above the law on cocaine. Everybody wanted to leave. We couldn't contractively leave because we was on one, we had one project out at the time, and then we were developing. Um, when they were doing um, what Niggas for Life, mm-hmm. we was doing Black Mafia Life. So when we finished those albums, Dre left. We got held up in contract. So yeah, to answer your question, we all were gonna leave with Dre because we worked with Dre every day and we hung out with Easy every day. But Easy was so fixed on as a young executive that Hella was right, mm. and Hella was right to say we need to honor the contracts. Because nobody was stealing. Let's get something straight. Nobody was stealing. It just wasn't fair. You know, that's what that's what Suge showed us. It wasn't fair. He just showed you what other niggas was getting over there. There you go. It's like a ball player. It's like a ball player. Like, a ball player. Yeah. Like, a ball yeah. player. like, oh, this dude, he he don't even have stats like you when he getting paid like this. That's what he showed us. And and so it wasn't fair, as we know at the end, how it, it all take a man ended up. To, it take a man to know that, though, and say that. Absolutely. You know I mean? Admit that, though. You yeah, know? absolutely. You so they moved on, and we we stayed, and we just kept developing what you're saying, what you see today as G-Funk, you know. <clears throat> but, you know, props to all, you know, when you see Snoop and you want to. Oh, man, that's, that's our family. Dre's, you know, yeah, props Snoop, to all them because they, yeah. they were able to mirror what we created and, and take it all yeah. over the world. So, the great, and like you know, I said, the greatest that's, thing, that's cool. the greatest thing that was Coca is saying, which is really, really dope is we were a part of something that was really great for hip hop. Yeah. You know, and they were the people who were able to take it to a commercial level. We mm-hmm. were underground. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When the, the chronic dropped, it was able to take it to the commercial, commercial level, level, pop level, like the pop yeah. level, yeah. which is dope. You know, to, to, in order to be a person to say, Hey, I got these ideals, homie, and you able to get in a position to get in front of people and really show that ideal to the world. I think that's awesome, dog. You know what I mean? What's so, and then with Warren the same way, and they're all they're all a part of us. You know, it's not what we have a problem with, what me and Coca have a problem with, and rest of the law we always had a problem with is people not writing us into the history. That's not them to do because people know this story. Yeah. People just don't know the story, but people in the industry know what happened. They know what the origin of G Funk is. They know it. We'll see. So, we'll see. <laughs> it, it goes back to it, to the DNA. There you go. Street mm-hmm. snow though. There the you go. Snow. Yeah. It, 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 it goes back to the DNA. Like I'm, like I said, for me, you know what I mean. You, I'm still blown away <laughs> because it, mm-hmm. like when you said that, I'm like, fuck. So musically, sense. you understand it. it, it. Yeah, it made yeah. fucking sense. Like, cause I, all right, mm-hmm. and this is my opinion. Okay. I look at G Funk. Mm-hmm. As somebody that was a historian yeah. of live instruments, yeah. melody, um, melody, melody, card singing, singing, and yeah. that's Goonie how, singing. That's yeah, how I, you know. Yeah. That I, and I'm, I want you to give me, a, but that's how I looked at mm-hmm. it. So for when you told me from Willie Hutt, that's why yeah. I just like, yeah, fuck, it makes sense. Yeah. Our parents, you know, our, our family were composers and writers first. That's why we, me and him, we inherited. All of our cousins don't have that. Only us. See. Usually only us. Like we, we were the ones that got ordained, blessed through the Creator with that. That's why we can, you know what I mean? Because it's in us, not on us. So for us, we, you know, when we were exchanging ideas, the cold thing about what we're saying, we was exchanging ideas. We thought it was a part of the music. We didn't think it was a part of like somebody labeling other people and yeah. saying, you know, this and not counting us in because we were just doing music. Light year grooving, as Coco would say. Man, so, you know, <laughs> so, so to go back because we, mm-hmm. we, we to go back a little bit. Okay, you mm-hmm. know, for both of y'all. All right. When was that first time you seen that video and you seen yourself and you was like, like I'm on. Well, it was the box. It was, back, box. It was the box back then. The box. <laughs> yeah. My, My the murder Miami. rap. Miami. 
Yeah, when Murder um, Rap was on the box, I was like, oh, it's over That shit used to come on the it's box. Over with. All it's over with. Yeah. It's over hey. with. I said, it's over with. The and then Rap City, yep, we get on Rap City, yeah, when it was on the box, Can, you know, continuously, then we got Rap City. Can you kind of give a, a little bit of history? Because, with you the, know, Murder Rap got banned. Okay. You know, Murder Rap got banned off MTV. It was it was us and two live crew. We were the only artists that got banned. We were the reason why now you have explicit lyrics. I, I would live like hustlers and uh, made in the what is it, uh, made in the USA. Live crew was acting the two up live crew back albums. So up. both of us, we were the first albums that got the explicit lyric stickers on them. Before that, they wasn't. Straight out of Compton don't have it. All the, yeah. um, um, I think Ice you know, D too. Criminal. No, Ice T didn't have it, remember? Not it? No, mm -mm, not, not Ryan Page. None of that had this. Listen, go back and look at it. They don't have no, it. No, no, I read it. Because I'm in that age. <laughs> you know. See, yeah. here's the thing. You guys are on the side of the fence of being stars. Right. I'm on that. I'm on that young age of being a fan. Yeah, explicit my lyrics uncle, didn't come out till 90. My uncle's 11 yeah. years older than me. Mm -hmm. so, so you know the records didn't so have that on there. as rap is coming on the scene... Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it from 11 year ahead of me, so he's already a teenager. So I'm, I'm watching. That's how I got exposed. Like right. I, I tell people, I remember when MTV didn't play no black video. There you go. I remember when Michael yeah. Jackson Fuck was the first. You and, know what I'm saying? And so what happened was is that Easy used it as controversy. He's like, okay, fuck it. They banned it. That's gonna make people want to order y'all video on this platform. The yeah. box was a was a thing like video on demand, yeah. but music videos where you could call in. Underground and, video, yeah, underground video, whatever you want to see. Diamond riders on there. It's the, box, it, it, it's Niggas, the Netflix. It's the Netflix yeah. of oh. like the music. It's like Netflix of music Was. at the time. That motherfucker <laughs> sit there all, all day, day long and just call <laughs> somebody, <laughs> make a phone remember, call, and put a video. Hey, remember your parents used to get mad. Like, <laughs> It was 395. Yeah. There you go. A video. For real. Video. It was 395. Mm -hmm. You yep. call in and there and you see hey. it would show up and you yeah. would see what somebody mm -hmm. called. And hey, what's yeah. the top happy. three videos you see on there, nigga? You see a butter law. Mm -hmm. See the butter law. Domu Riders, yeah. you know, Nationwide Red Blouse, Domu right. Riders. Yep. Mm -hmm. and what, what it was what? a it was a couple because it was like You know, I was on the man, you know, just to take it back, the first time I ever seen cocaine was on the box. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was, uh, and um, slow burning, huh? Slow burn, burn when he yeah. when, when he mm -hmm. came in as like a little midget store. and yeah, shit to the liquor store. Exactly, yeah. And we sitting there, we watching. We <laughs> like, like, what yeah. the fuck? What the mm -hmm. fuck is this? <laughs> oh, I think we're all out of love. See, Mr. See, Mr. Little Japanese man, I'm not gonna rob your liquor store. That's what I like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're like, but but it's it's, it's slapping. Coming mm -hmm. home from school, watching so, that man, shit. Man, coming home from school. Yeah, yeah. So you know, we we you know we. And we then when MTV me. raps, you know, when MTV raps was kind of like more the over the top shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then Yo, I mean, like, not Yo, but um, Rap City, City. Yeah. was more of the core stuff, you know, because BET hadn't really got his legs yet. Remember? And, it was, uh, and, Donnie, what was his name? Donnie Wood? Donnie. Donnie yeah, Simpson. but then they had the, 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 um, the mayor. Remember he had the mayor? Rap City, the mayor. Yeah. So that was before Big Les. You real know, talk, real, yeah, and, real but they talk. had got their legs yet, so you get it on there, but you couldn't you get it big on Les? TV. Yeah, Big Les. Yeah. Oh man, Rap City. Big yeah, Les. so shout out to Big Les. Shout out. Yeah, that's, that's the homes over there, man. Yeah. man. Hey, you see his. But space yeah, right. yeah. So you're right. So you either got the box or you got um, Rap City. Yeah. Because yo would, you know, yo was still MTV, so they still was kind of like, and they booked our video because we paid off a judge in it. And Easy didn't want to change it. He was like, no, we we want to be controversial with Above the Law. Fuck that. That's the whole video, paying off the judge in murder rap. Remember the scene where Dre, Easy, and Law paid the judge off, and then I'm I got out. Too much now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's the climate. That's the freedom of speech climate. You know, oh. it, it, now if you do something like that, you consider it against something like, oh, anti-police. But hey, we was, uh, fuck the police was anti-police. And ain't it crazy, y'all, that nobody's in this era as fucked up as shit is, just to be honest. Nobody's created a modern day fuck the police. No, Think about that. Look at the freedom. Look at the freedoms that you don't have any longer. Versus in 1987, 88, look at all the freedom that we had musically. Now, if you say it, you against something like, but really, it's it's real, you know, yeah. like like it's, it's I, I trip off hip hop now for two reasons. Hip hop was always the voice of the people, and it never had anything to do with establishment. It always was anti-establishment. Even the fun shit was always anti-establishment. Now it's all establishment now. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For no reason. I, I, I tell a motherfucker stick a gerbil up your much ass. Much as social media, off. much as people rant and rave oh, off shit. social media, why are you so I'm, fucking I'm gonna sensitive? Say what I'm gonna stick say. two up there. Yeah. yeah, I feel with my hands, man. I don't feel. I don't have no feelings. I have feelings for my children, my woman, and you know, and my friends and family. I, other than that, I feel with my hands. So if 
I'm looking at somebody saying something, how they feel. I don't really have no, okay, because we from that era that, hey, motherfucker fell how they fell. Yo, yeah. Okay, <laughs> give a fuck, uh, whatever. Yeah, you know? And that's what I trip off of hip hop now. I'm like, okay, is it really hip hop? Because, or, or rap, or however people want to roll it up, because it, it was usually always about your voice, other people, and anti establishment. I don't care what it was. Sissy you always hop. had that element in it, you know? <clears throat> so, I, man, I got another, man, I got another okay. question, man. Was it a business move? Um, <laughs> a directio move? Okay. That that history mm-hmm. that we just seen with this movie. Okay. That y'all wasn't mentioned or y'all wasn't written in. But well, we was mentioned in you mean um um straight out of the company? Yeah, but we was you, mentioned in it but, um as being the reason why they didn't know why Dre was tripping. The little scene right there where at the pool party, like, yeah. oh, yeah, if you got above the law, you got Michelet, you got DLC, you got cocaine, you got this, you got all this different shit, right? But one thing we sat and realized, we was like, okay, this about this movie about the homies, you know, um, which was cool because yeah. I think that story needed to be told. Yeah. They're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you know. They're the reason why me and this man sitting on the panel, I'm going to be honest, you know. They're the reason why Eric is, it, people know Eric from a different perspective, I feel. You know, now certain things I think was pro the people who did the movie, you know, yeah. as far as Hollywood is concerned. Yeah. You know, but I think it was, it needed to be done. And I wouldn't want the focus to be on Ruthless Records because I think that's a story that needs to be told after the fact. You know, I think Ruthless Records is a bigger story, you know, than the Straight Outta Compton story because that's a piece of what, Ruth, the, 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 the things that, the reason... If you look at Ruthless Records happening, think about where music is at. Think about Dre the billionaire. Think about Ice Cube, the, the movie mogul. Think about the Kendrick Lamar's, the games, the the Eminem's. None of that happens without Ruthless Get Records bone? happening. Bone? No, I'm just saying, I'm yeah. just saying. None of that happens without Ruthless Records happening. I'm talking about even things that people don't realize outside of that. There's no 50. There's no, not to say that 50 ain't a hell of an artist, but there's no aftermath. There's no reason why you should look at Dre like you look at him yeah. without what happened at Ruthless Records. There's no death row, y'all. There's not a death row. If, if, that, if that single move doesn't happen, there's none of this. Now, everybody, I mean, because we being honest and we're going to tell the truth. Yeah, you know what I mean? We're not going to sit up here and sugarcoat yeah, it. We on the spot and all these people the spot. know this. Really? You know what I mean? So that's what we look at. So when we look at telling our story, we look at, okay, that's NWA story. That ain't Ruthless story. So now Above the Law and Cocaine get to tell their story. You know, yeah. now Bone gets to tell their story. Now JJ Fag gets to tell their story. DLC gets to tell his story. Everybody gets to tell their story. So, But if you put it all in there, and like Miss L.A., she, t- she had the right to tell her story. I love how you... You hey, feel me? I love, I love men. Hey. Come on, man. So when I you, so when you put it in that context, that's cool that they told their story. Now, there's other Y'all people that around them that created that legend, that, that legendary label. Famous niggas get fucked up. Mm-hmm. Ever seen some famous rappers? See, this, see, I told you, man. <laughs> I'm, no, because I'm listening to I'm you talk. I'm like, damn, up, but they done been around. <laughs> they done been around a long time. I, I, the I, didn't, I know rapper. they didn't seen your favorite rapper get fucked or fucked up or slapped or something. Out, so. hey, man, yeah. Yeah. Man, who you I y'all tell that brother the law story, man. Oh, I'm just asking. Y'all ain't want no names, but you know, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, tell them about that story. Yeah, you, hey, you, but the Hey, man, we ain't pointing no elbows around here. I just want to know. Do this. <laughs> hey, anytime you see some scars, I'm gonna tell you. I see OG, he got some scars on his oh, yeah, oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, watch out, man. This step back, man. Yeah, look at that. Was, yeah, that's been broke before. <laughs> on the motherfucking face. Niggas got bolos. Check this out. I've been broke before on the motherfucking face. But, um, and no bragging about it. But, um, yeah, um, the story about Cube, which me and Cube are good friends, you know, you know, he's the first person that I ever that I befriended in NWA. Yeah. Um, because him and Law are like brothers. And he used to bring them around. We was, de- you know, developing above the law. So um, what happened was, is me, Go Mag, DJ Chaos, um, Cam G, rest in peace. We did a, a article in the LA Times about, um, we sold these, we stole, sold like 180,000, 160,000 records the first week Living Like Hustlers came out. Okay. And they was asking, oh, what makes you guys? What's the formula? What's this? And, and Go Mag was like, yeah, man, because we talk about, what cats are going through or what we went through in the streets from the slang in the bang in the hang in whatever the, the hood politics is we not like ice cube that when we was out there hustling he was away at college and then he came home and wrote about basically our lives yeah basically it was kind of a jab because he was leaving in wa at the time he just left 
Yeah. But L.A. Times stirred the pot. They went to ask do. Cube what they thought about the statement that we made in the L.A. Times. Yeah, go right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he said, new Jack niggas from Pomona. You know Pomona. Oh, Should only oh talk that about, was. Yeah, okay, that's only cool. talk about the okay. 10 freeway because that's the only thing going on out there is the freeway going through it. That oh. was subliminal. So we said, cool. So Easy called me. Said, ah, did you get the LA Times? He clown, huh? So Easy was an agitator. I said, yeah, he <laughs> so what I So I said, y'all said, I'm gonna fuck your homie up. Wanna see him? Oh, don't do that, don't do that. I was like, and I see him on site. Yeah. On site. And mind you, I'm fresh <laughs> off the streets, like six months maybe. It's our first, it's in 90. You know okay, what I mean? So okay. we fresh off the streets. Hey, 80, yeah, yeah, 80, yeah. 80, 80, 80, 80. We, you know, we, nigga, we still got like money in his pocket. Yeah, I got nigga, money nigga, in my pocket. Nigga, I'm still that street good. motherfucker. And I yeah. had money already, so yeah. it was good. You know, so I'm talking to him and saying, I'm going to fuck that motherfucker up when I see him, right? So it was us, um, but low profile. Low profile, gangstar. Gangstar. Yeah. Our first concert. Rest in peace, cool. Yeah. Rest in peace, Coolio. Uh, our first concert, right? So, I'm knowing he go oh in in eight when they were CMW at the yeah, time. Yeah. Eight and chill, shout out eight hey. and chill. So I go to the arena. I know all these dudes from the streets, right? So because I should hustle with um Dub C God brother, my boy Desi. Okay. So I pull up. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna fuck your homie up. Cause you know how we get out. We, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah, yeah, California yeah. niggas. Nigga, I'm fuck your homie up. up. Oh, oh, when I, on, on yeah, site, when I walk into the up. thing, I'm like, I'm gonna fuck your homie up. They're like, nigga, how we go business, homie? Whatever. So, boop. So, I, I spin out, boop. I, I shoot the eight in the room. I said, I'm gonna fuck that nigga cube up. Don't say nothing. Nigga, oh, we ain't even in that, homie. We can call it. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> That's right. your homie. So, me and Go, we in the, we, we in the little the little, little area when you, when, when outside of a rest, uh, out of our uh, dressing room, right? Yeah. So, we chopped it up. Dude walk in. Go hit me like, oh, there you go. I walk up to him, I bail up to him like, what's up that bullshit, punk ass shit you talking about uh, uh, in the LA Times, homie, bitch ass nigga, like that. Oh, you a bitch ass nigga. You still his ground? I'm like, cool. Big Dre, which was our security guard, and KJ, rest in peace, yeah. they rushed me. Oh, aren't you tripping? You always fighting this shit. You gonna fuck it up for y'all already. I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna fuck this dude up. You know what I mean? So punk ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? So they break us apart. He was Rolling Stones magazine at the time, right? Boom. Okay. So he pulled. So they pull him in the, in the, in his own little dressing room, and they pull throw me in my dressing room. Like, calm down, Hutch, you tripping? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so at the time they like, oh, shit, come be tripping, man. This nigga gonna do something, right? So I go in the dressing room. I'm heated. So I'm pacing the room. Like, <laughs> I'm hot. <laughs> Look, y'all. The nigga Q walk in and say, "What's up?" What's supposed to happen next? We from LA. What, man, what's man, what's supposed to happen next? Nigga, what's up? Rick, nigga, Rick, nigga, you know what's up? Take it a day, nigga. What? Hey, nigga, nigga came in the room. Nigga, nigga came way. in the room, though. Yeah. yeah. He said, what's up? But he wanted to be cool. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 it's, it's, it's too late. Already too, it was it's too late. late. Yeah, it's too late. He didn't know what the code was. He did all that talking right there. Yeah, all that talking. I wanted to get it on already. So, 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 so he swing out the door. Chaos hit him with a two piece. And then they rush all of us at the time. Boom. So after the fact, speed you up. That's why in in the in the tabloids they said we jumped him, but it was me and him head up. He just didn't have no, he didn't have no play because he didn't know I was going to get at him like that. Yeah. You know, he, I mean, Cube, one thing I say about Cube, Cube ain't really no fighter, but he, you know, he should stand his ground. Yeah. You know what I mean? He'll stand his, he, I mean, he faced me, you know. Yeah, real Once tough. he got took off on, I mean, so to answer your question, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that happened, you know. And then after the fact, you know, the Cube, scene you that they give show, us a deal. We, we all family, man. We could talk yeah, about it. Family. We can line it up. He ain't tripping. We ain't tripping. He not we tripping. We he not ain't, tripping. Ain't, nah, <laughs> we cool now. Yeah. You know, and that, that brings you up to what happened Smoke in the movie. Smoke about it. You know, uh, what happened when, at, at the new music seminar. His homies thought we uh, jumped him, and then, they, then we scrapped, and then they found out that me and him went head up, you know, at the time. So this is head up. I mean, it's just, you know, two young niggas getting down. Yeah, really. You know? Two young and, niggas and getting down. That's all it was. I think people got to realize, like, it's 1980. I mean, it's 1989, 1990. It's early 1990. So we fought. It's a different. It's a different era. It wasn't oh, like yeah. it is. Yeah, now different we, we fought, yeah, and and we, you gonna yeah. fight with somebody if you have real beef. That's why we like, man, rap beef is different than real beef. What we had was a real beef. 
amongst two brothers that knew yeah. each other from a family. It's like your brother say, "Oh, you bitch ass, but what? what? They ain't trying to we kill each other. We finna get, get, get in, in the backyard, homie. Right there in that restaurant. You know yeah, we finna get in the backyard. Man, come on. So yeah, that, and that did. Nigga might end up the best of friends afterwards. You oh know, yeah, you know, we, you know no, we solid. He done did records. He done did records with him. He's used a lot of records that I, a couple of records that I've produced. You know, and I got paid. You know, me getting, I got paid from straight out of Compton. Off the movie because of Cube. Cube put in a cause. I was I was fighting hard for the uh, records that me and him done in the movie. Um, Nick, neighborhood Sniper, all them records. Like that's how we got paid because Cube signed off a lot of that stuff. It was through him. So Cube got love, love you know. I got, yeah. Well, yeah, we got love for Cube. Yeah, I Cube's mean, a homie. Yeah, things happen the way and they happen. We were kids, y'all. Yo, you gotta realize we was kids. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really was like teenagers. Twenty seven. Twenty seven years old. Yeah, now imagine time. that we. In our and we was teenagers, 20s. and we was like 19, yeah. 20 years old. I remember when he took us to London. <laughs> he took us to yeah, London, you this story. And, 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 it, and it tripped me out because, you know, a nigga just off the porch, you know, go down the street, the homie right around the corner type shit. Mm -hmm. But another country? Like, nah, nigga, different. I can't fathom this, right? So he took us out there, and... It was so much of a hell of an experience because it gave us a chance to see different cultures outside of our own and, and let us know it's a big world out there that actually Absolutely. love the culture, right? But then I had called my girl because I knew my wife. We was together since 19, eight, 1984, right? <laughs> So that's, you know, next year, that'd be 39 years of being together with my woman, okay, yeah. right? We got eight beautiful kids. Yeah. Shout out to my family, yeah. right? But I was on the phone, like, I was around the corner and shit. Like, I didn't understand about this shit would cost a lot of money on the phone, my nigga. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like parlaying, nigga. I'm in London, baby. Get to the story, though. Let it finish. Man, I, I, I. They ain't gonna laugh. I, 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 I talked to her, like, three or four times. And then I get a, get a phone call downstairs. Need to see you. Need to see you now. Nigga, I didn't know I ran my shit up to almost 12 grand or some shit like that. Yeah, Call it over crazy. Yeah. $10,000. Easy, $10, shit easy was so hot shit. at me. I was like, damn. But he was like, nigga, it's going to come out but your, your check. Ass. Nigga, it's going to come out your <laughs> ass, nigga. You got it, nigga. But you ain't never going to see it. But it was it, it was a hell of an experience because, because it was like, you know, that was the chance I had to, you know, reconnect with my wife. You know, we had, you know, our firstborn was um, uh, twins. And Easy was so special. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people looked at him on the surface, but they didn't know what was behind the closed curtains. Yep. And he really gave a fuck about us. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there was a time when my kids was born, you know, way after the London experience, and my kids had bad hernias. You understand? And they would add medical complications because they're identical twins that were preconceived early. You know what I mean? Yeah. Easy drove from Calabasas. He had a meeting. From Calabasas to Palm Montana in an hour. Mm -hmm. and, and cashed me out $20,000 and said, not on my clock, man. Go get your surgery for your kids. And they're 31 today with no complications. So easy to us was much more than, oh, that's our CEO. That's right, yeah. Nah, he actually gave a fuck about us. Oh, and, yeah, okay. and, and, you know, if we would have cleared that up with Jerry Heller and got Jerry Heller out the mix, easy had the best intentions for everybody he everybody, ever encountered. Yeah, yeah. That's he, why I say he do not get the credit that he right. deserved. But because we're still disciples of those times, as well as participant, we're going to fill in them gaps. Yeah, and, we, you know, we, we believe that Straight Outta Compton was necessary for that part. Yeah. You know, to let people know who actually was. Even if they was. didn't. You yeah, know, because at first, it, yeah. I was telling Hutch, like, nigga, but, 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 when you what get about, to be like, what about, yeah. what about, but, but, mm -hmm. but then when I realized it, it gave us a whole bunch of elbow room and that movie whether they, you know, White Hollywood wanted to pack the seats in, yeah. that needed to happen because it shed some light on on NWA, but anybody that was attached to it because yeah. Easy E was really our West Coast Russell Simmons. Absolutely. And when you're talking about the dynamics of really just— Really was a Barry Gordy, really, yeah, of our era. When you think about the yeah. dynamics— B 
billions and billions and billions of dollars came out of that tree. That's yeah. right. Culture. When you go to New York, when you go to Detroit, it's niggas rolling six bowls, B's and C's out there banging. Oh, I'm not LA saying culture. that's something to write home to grandma to, but the experience and the influence yeah, the LA culture. was the much more. LA culture. Hey, Easy yeah. was the first it's person because to put a Mexican on the like, road. Like, what you call said on there? You're Kid Frost? What you call said, yeah. what you call yeah. said on there? And mm -hmm. he was doing shit at a time where that was a no-no. You wouldn't hook up with, with that says back then. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the first one to we did a Latino root. You know what? Latino. So you know, don't ever say that. What was the name of his shit? Oh, pump it up, pump, pump it, it up. up. We yeah. forgot, yeah. Shout I forgot about Rose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, easy. Yeah. You know, just to sum it up, and not you know, because it's a lot of shit, man. We could tell you, yeah. but just like when you look at Easy, he was much more than, than a rapper than, who died than a rapper who died from age. Nah, he actually took his hustle money. Mm -hmm. And hooked LinkedIn with some guys that were very talented. Yep. And took a chance on Pomona Cats, took a chance on Cleveland Cats, took a chance on Essays back when That's that was right. a no -no. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't hook up with the Sereños back then. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. now because the Easy did that, years later, look at the cause and effect of what's going on is the reason why it's a significant fact, the reason why Brown Brothers and, and Black Brothers can even get along and make True. music. That's true. It's because yeah. of those times. You know, the embryo, the embryos of that, that the blueprint that he had for mm -hmm. that made, you know, it pays off 30 years later, yeah. 40 years later. So, so you know, you know it, 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 so it's it, much more bigger than what people give credit to, like a gangster rap group for his NWA. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like he's saying it's and, his and mind that's alone. Stuff, that's the stuff. That's the stuff that we're very proud of mm -hmm. to be able to come from that soil. Absolutely. And years later, be able to fill in the gaps because people are so intrigued with these brothers that we helped in the in the Hall of Fame. Right. What was it like? What was it like when y'all was doing uh, same gang in Nickerson Gardens? Yeah. What was it like when Pac used to sit here and watch Above the Law and cocaine soaking it up? Mm -hmm. It used to yeah. be around easy and be mm -hmm. like, wow. Yep. What was it like? Yeah. Well, you wouldn't know that unless you have the disciples. And some talking, of the disciples yeah. telling you that. There's a lot of us are still living, so. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's so the it's thing a, about it's it. At the end of the day, you brothers, choose, I mean, you, you know, 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 know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, <laughs> when you call yourself an independent, you have to associate and be inspired by people that led by example. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Easy yeah. E led Take by example. Rest. When you think about Dr. Trey Head, Headphones, which was very successful in speakers, Easy mm -hmm. E already had that idea. That's right. Yeah. See, a lot of people, things that people did got from Easy E. Was his vision? But the problem is, is if you don't credit those people from getting yeah, it from exactly. that person. Yeah. So, because so, yeah. you're talking about visionary, you, what he's talking about is like yeah. when you're looking at people who are visionaries. Like we were blessed to be around Easy. And the way we look at things is because of Easy's vision. Yeah, we don't kind of look at it, and, and like he's saying, the way Dre look at things, and the way I look at things, and Cocaine look at things, and the rest of our colleagues look at things is because of Easy's vision. Of Easy. We'll see. Yeah, this that doesn't make it. That doesn't make them less. It just makes them no. be like we're from a great mind. You know, we're all were groomed into the business from a great mind. You know. I got to oh, go And, ahead, go ahead. and mm -hmm. it's, you know, I'll say this. Just like if George Clinton walked into the room Absolutely. and see, seen us. Yeah. Last time he was up there, he called me. I don't care where I'm going. You you always got to have respect for the people that paved the way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I might be on more features than George Clinton. So right. right. That's George Clinton. That's right. Yeah. Without Without... George Clinton would be on me. Wouldn't be a lot of West Coast rap. Absolutely, West Coast rap was basically built on P funk. Just like That's that. true. Yeah, like Zap or all that. Like. And Period. we knew Roger. We we did a lot of when we were younger coming up in there. We did a lot of shows with Zap, mm -hmm. opening up for them. We did a lot of shows with them. You know what I mean? We knew we knew Roger. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was friends with his son. Rest in peace, both of them. And his brother. We were friends with them. Like, we knew them coming up, and they knew our parents. You know what I mean? So so for us, we always look at it like you're supposed to give people their due. People say flowers. You're supposed to give them their credit. Yeah. Fuck flowers. Yeah, fuck give them their the credit. Flowers. Yeah, I tell everybody. Yeah, <laughs> give them their credit. Fuck yeah, the flowers. Man, flowers. Man, give my bitch on, some man. flowers. Don't give, give me credit, motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, you know. but it's a trip. It's a trip how everything come full circle. Mm-hmm. 
how um, when some of the things we were touching on on Uncle Sam's curse, where you see the jail, you look at the cover, it looked like Donald Trump. I think the universe used us and they use a lot of rappers, whether they want to recognize or not, true. for things that happen light years later. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? We were talking, he was talking about Donald Trump back then in right. those funk, in those albums. We were saying, fuck the police back then and look what's happening right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it was like a precursor mm -hmm. to things that are going to happen right now. Mm. It, it, it gives you goosebumps because it's not like you're on some mystical ass shit and you know, but it's amazing how the universe use your pox, your brother laws, your yep. NWA saying after police, your cocaine's no pain, no gain. The years later, it applies down to a T. But think about happening. this, y'all. The world is still the same. You know what I mean? From what we were talking about back then. Ain't the world still the same? Ain't it yeah. crazy? The phone is just, you can see, you can watch Netflix on your phone now, but the world's still fucked. Hmm. You know what I mean? And nobody won't wake up and realize we still in that same fuck state. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Like, it's still bad in the ghetto. Issue with the police. Politics is, polis, politics is still don't get, politicians still don't give a fuck. Yeah. Same shit we were talking about on Uncle Sam's Curse. Yeah. As we talked, you know what I mean? Like, okay, how's your, because politically, what we looking at is we looking at the same thing, but just playing out on a different time, but it's the same timeline. It's more exposed. And that's than where people, then. that's where people fail to realize that these are the same things that's been happening. Yeah. But like you said, with social media, with the everything access at your phone, you see it in real time. It's no different world, y'all. The only thing different is technology. The world ain't changed. People are like the world has changed. No, it's, it hasn't. Because if you look at it, it's still drama in the hood. It's still people getting knocked off. Like we said, oh, these rappers is getting killed. All these. It's Dog, worse, that's man. people was getting killed back then. What do you, who do you think Pac got killed by? Starter coats, Jordans. Right. What you think? Yeah, exactly. They jacking for Jordan, jacking for starter coats, jacking for jewelry, yeah, yeah, laying up. dudes down man. at the Olympic Auditorium, at the LA Sports Arena. Everything cats getting laid down. I, it's I, no different. It's no different, and it's no. It was no different in every. Like we were talking about this the other day when we were talking about like the um. What's the cats who made Annie up from Brooklyn? Um, some cats Annie up. What's the name? Yeah, MOP. Think about when that record came out. They talking about Jack and Fools. Yeah. So it's always been here. Real talk. So we talking about what happened with P and B, Pop Smokes, all this. that's all that element already been here. Yeah, that's true. That hasn't changed. Like it's just mm -hmm. you see it. It's always been here, y'all. Man, cats been getting laid down for their jewelry. Been getting laid down for starter coats, Jordans. Hey, it's still been getting laid. I've always been getting laid down for that. Man, I got a question, mm -hmm. man. Where you brothers at, man, during the L.A. uprising? Oh, we was in it. We was in the mix. You know what I'm we was right there. We left the studio. What truck was behind us? That that they drove Reginald the dudes Denny. out. The Reginald Denny truck. We, we was, was right there early in traffic. In the morning. <laughs> Stuck in traffic. We actually left the studio. Remember? Oh, Florence. It was, it was the evening. We left yeah. the studio, and we were driving up Normandy and Western. Yep, yep. Taxi, um, in um the one in Florida, yeah, in the one coming up, coming, nigga. yeah, coming up Van S, and then we turn, and then we right end up being right there on the corner where it pop right there at the right yep. there. You can actually see us swerving through all that shit. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. Shit was crazy. It was beautiful. Yeah, though. it was in the I mix. Gonna lie. I loved it. But see, what I loved was the gang truce. <laughs> yeah. The part I love. Because the remember when we was walking down the street, we yeah. was like, That's damn, we seen niggas in red and blue. Like, nigga, what the fuck is going they on was together. Right here, nigga? And then when they was hitting the, you know, what well, people don't know, since we on some hood shit anyway. Well, Buffer, I remember what, 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 what they was on was when you hit the pawn shops, what the, what the gang bank was saying. Y'all can have all the jewelry. Yeah. We just want the guns. We just want the guns. Western Surplus was right there. There you go. Yeah. I, I, was, I lived on 105th and Western. There right you go. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, they yeah, like, we went up to Ladera Heights and seen and, the whole oh, on fire, burning. the whole city burning down. Oh, yeah, it was right there in the mix. Bro. Hey, I, I, I hey when that shit cracked up, I was on my bike, nigga, riding through that motherfucker. Me and my homeboy had a homie and Shani, nigga. My mom had to find this nigga, and the whole city was burning on fire. On fire. Yeah. We had to. We just like y'all, bro, come in. They and all this shit was just smoke area. I'm like, damn. You know what fucked me up the most though? When the taste came. 
Mm-hmm. Tanks came when they had yeah, the big lots it was over there by the Slauson. Remember, they had that big <laughs> lots, and they, that was their compound. Remember, exactly. that parking lot was they, it was like military co- coming through them. Days. When the tanks came, that's, crazy. that's when the shit got that was crazy. Some day. It was like hey, five days. You know what's yeah. crazy about that? The blackout. It was yeah. the blackout. When, they, when, they, when you couldn't come outside, couldn't do shit. When nightfall. Hey, yeah. you know, man, you know the only reason why the military didn't come out was because of George Bush? Wow. Fucking crazy shit, man. You ever do the research behind Bush. that? Because first off, it's illegal for the military to ever come on the United States grounds. They did. They was on. That's they why was you in have. There. That's they why was we there. have a national guard. That's right. Yeah, for sure. So man. it's illegal. So once them tanks came, all they would, all of them, they wanted, they wanted to take it up under martial law, and it was gotcha. up. They was on them, and George Bush. Nah, I'm not doing that. Wow, wow. It's crazy. Just, it be just, because I be, man, I be doing just research Study. and studies on a lot they of They really got things. scared when the gang troops came, though. That's oh, what scared them. Terrified. It, that's oh, what yeah. scared them. They, I don't terrified. think, the looting, I think they could have, because once everything burned down, cats kind of, but they got they got afraid of that. They was afraid of that. When the, when the gang troops came, they got afraid of well, that hey, shit. Was it a gang troops in Pomona? Yeah, everywhere. Yeah, everybody went under the gang troops. Nobody beefed. And nobody beefed. Even if you had enemies, you just, it was just, you know, off. And, you know, everything was off, yeah. Well, it's a little bit. It, you know, that's always been the weird shit to L.A. Because it's like, you know, the first time you hit that county. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You oh, know, yeah. especially back yeah. then. Yeah. You know, now, but, you know, especially back then. 9,800. 4,800. 4,800. Yep, you're right. Oh, God. And that Damn, always used to, I, that used to Bump fuck. it up, nigga. Bump it up, nigga. Mm-hmm. Yep. You better say you're from somewhere. Oh, boy. Better say it's all you can get. Hey. You guys were so big. Y'all mm-hmm. a little more. So y'all had the money bags and shit. Yeah, huh? exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you hustling, they, 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 see in the eighties, when you hustling, like when you hustling in the eighties, you you kind of like. I remember you, man, you fuck with all kind of hoods. The first time, you know, I got it in the night. I remember mm-hmm. OG told me, yeah. he said, "Oh yeah, young, stop me coming here since the money bags." Man, I must have mm-hmm. got on. I mean, what the fuck is the money man? I was just, oh yeah, niggas was coming up here with bread. Bread. Yeah, when you get money, yeah. you coming there with money. He yeah. said back then, mm-hmm. niggas used to come, they went to work. money. Yeah. So that was their hustle. They mm-hmm. coming in and they about to oh, be yeah. rich. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, you know what I'm saying? Allegedly. There you go. <laughs> we'll say it like, allegedly. as they say nowadays, yeah. allegedly. allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. Hey, but, Pomona, man, y'all got like a, a rich history. Though. Real talk. Yeah. Industry in general, man. Oh, yeah. Right. Just sitting here, just like, just listening mm-hmm. to y'all chop it. I got a butter law. Mm-hmm. Sugar free. Yep. You got. Sugar Shane Mosley. That's Sugar Shane Shane Mosley. Mosley. Yep. Little, little, little Fantastic Poor Girl. Yep. Um, Jessica. Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba. Mm-hmm. You man, you forgot, man. You still got man, Pippin Young. Pippin Young. Out of Pippin Young. Oh, mama's. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's somebody, it's somebody else. A couple, couple of ball players. Yeah, a couple of ball players. You know, players I'm going to yeah. keep it real with you. Yeah, you got a bunch of ball One players. Of Hell of a football, One little kid. You got a couple of ball, ball players. When we was in school, you know who was up? Went to John Muir. Motherfucking. Uh, that's Tina. Yeah, that's about Tina. You talking about um, my man, Stacey Augman. Stacey Augman. Yeah. But nah, he was from Pomona, though. And he used oh, to go. Um, 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 man, Obi Moore. Yeah, Obi Moore. One of the yeah. fastest mm-hmm. man. He was up because you I got was, Mike Williams. I mean, um, uh, Mike with um, the boxer. Um, Weaver. Mike Weaver. Weaver. Mike Weaver. Yeah, Mike yeah. Weaver. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. a, for, it's a small, a lot man. Of it's cats. a lot of talent. A lot of cats talent. came up out of that. that, that a lot of motherfucking hub. talent, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rich yeah. motherfucking city, too. We had to promote ourselves, though. It's a lot of small city with a big name. Because it's a working town. street, too. You know, Pomona's a working town. Everybody from L.A. moved to Pomona because of General Dynamics, remember? Yeah. Active. It's mostly bitches. LA people. It's mostly LA people <laughs> are down south. Saying, people, which by bigger. way of but it's you know, active too. That's mm-hmm. what's crazy. Well, it, it, yeah. that, that that music. You know, one Got thing. Pee, man. Mm-hmm. One thing that Absolutely. I gotta say about man. One thing I gotta say about Pomona. It's the same way how like at Dago. It's the same way how like at yeah. Oldham. Mm-hmm. Y'all always had your own music scene. True. Yeah. So it was like even though then we in LA, then they come to Pomona. Like damn, this is what. A whole nother world. It was a whole nother. Just even mm-hmm. listen to the music. It's like, yeah, damn, yeah. this was cracking. Y'all got this. Yeah. This shit going. It, it is it's, cracking. It's, it's when you could have an LA vibe, but you can see cats think a little bit out of the box. Real talk. You know what I mean? Real, like a little bit talk. out of the box. Real it's like talk. LA vibe, but it's like, Come oh yeah, on, it's a little bit to the right, to the say, left. Man, type hey, shit. Man, hey man, you know? hey man, hey, stand for the LA, 16th, though. baby. It's really LA. It's LA. Okay, let me take it a little bit deeper. Could y'all say that the G phone started in Pomona? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. yeah, can we get that on the spot? Absolutely well, on this, the spot. Yeah, what? G Funk started in the DNA. Yeah. G Funk started when, him in the P. It makes mm-hmm. motherfucking sense. That's yeah. why I said makes. And it's crazy the rest of the was cooked both, up. Both if you talk about yeah. a bubble of cocaine in the, in the motherfucking free, chicken shack, we you know both was put on by Compton. 
Because <laughs> huh. he comes through okay. quick, we come through easy. You see what uh, I'm saying? Ain't that crazy? Uh, yeah, we, we say we the P and the CPT. Yeah, the P and the CPT. <laughs> with the South Central, with the South Central pop top on it. Yeah. Man, why that shit don't get exposed like that, though? <laughs> it's like, y'all kind of, it's like, y'all, y'all, the story don't get uh, put out there with y'all. Well, it's starting. It's with, start. It's starting to, you know. And I think we came from a start, time. It's starting to happen now, you know. That, like when, he, like when he, when Hutch was saying, he was like, um, you know, niggas in the streets know. Right. Yeah. 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 I'm like, if you're a real one, you know. That's right. Nigga don't want to admit. But what we had to do talk. when we Mom. first started this campaign, we had to say, okay, we need to target media. Because right. media is only going to go with what they're going to go with. That's right. Mm-hmm. So we did your No Jumpers. We did your American Cholos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We did all that shit already, and they did their homework. Yeah. So now the media is starting to, you know, realize what's going on. And also, shout out to Warren G, because he was on the Fox, whitest yeah. the whitest news Fox, uh, place you can have. 5. All he K-Cal. said, nah. He, they was like, mm-hmm. well, well, all this G-Funk thing, where it starting Long Beach? He was like, wait, wait, hold on. Pause, Jigga. Nah, I got I got influence, and, and it came from above the law. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's why I always heard So it now, right, exactly. I'm now that the media is I'm getting it right, rightfully so, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Because any nigga that you put in that work, you want to get your credit. Yeah, yeah. Now yeah. it's starting to really revert back, rightfully so. You know, and we got brothers that are not here, like KMG, Dooley. Yep. And we're not only just doing it for us, we're doing it for our family. Right. Our legacy. And just putting out good-ass, dope-ass music. Man, so when that book coming, man? It's coming. It's coming. You know um, hopefully, you're trying to put it out next summer. Um, we also try to do a series called Living Like Hustlers. You know, which is, you know, story of above the law and cocaine. Yeah. How we all came up in the streets. And, um, you know, we excited about, you know, me and him forming the architects of G-Funk because me and him was able to do in a new form how we can protect above the law and cocaine legacy. That's really the biggest hurdle that we've been in. To go back to what my man was saying is that why people don't know is because we don't come from the era of where, you know, people said, I created this or I did this and I did that. What we're trying to let media know is that we just want to be counted. We're not here to knock nobody. We're not here to say nobody stole nothing. We're not trying to say that we was left out of nothing. And it's up to us to tell you guys the story, you know, of of what we did. And we claim G-Funk. We don't, we don't just sit up here and say it, it was a byproduct of what we did. It's what we actually put forth, you know, being coined and named by Cam G and Laylaw. You know, and me creating a sound sonically and the and above the law, uh, I mean above the law collectively with cocaine and Go Mac and DJ Chaos and 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 Tupac, and, and, Tupac and, and, and they're on a record. So for us, so so for us doing that, you know, it's about legacy of above the law and cocaine. It's not really about knocking nobody. It's just us coming out and saying it because we know Rolling Stones ain't gonna talk to us until me and him. With us, with us doing the Architects of G-Funk, which is a funk hip-hop band, funk soul hip-hop band, you know, we knew we had to really put the stamp on G-Funk, you know, so people could realize it was a really predominant style of music that came out. It changed the course of what hip-hop was with the Chronic and the G-Funk era record, yep. you know, yep. and um, we're proud of that. So when anybody asks us that, that want to know the information, we'll claim it, we'll tell you, we'll give you the whole story, and, you know, here we are. So, you know? I got a question, man. Do you guys got a trademark? No, not yet. They trying to hold it up? I'm, well, we, well, we're working on some working things. On, we got to... Yeah, yeah. Okay, Can't man. Really say. Cause we, yeah, 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 say, we, yeah, say, yeah. Say, hold up, nigga. Hold up, no, no. <laughs> nah, nah. You know, I'm always a, I'm always no everything from That's a right, the bigger perspective. Man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. From a business like, standpoint, we really can't. Say no man. Say no man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say no man. You ain't gotta say nothing mm-hmm. else, brother. But so yeah, I, but but yeah, like I mean, sonically, you know, like I said, you know, we understood it from like he brought up earlier from a P Funk perspective. Like it's our identity. Hmm. So we're not never when people ask us about it, we're not never gonna deny it. We're not never gonna stand on it. But one thing we're not gonna do is feel like, oh yeah, you supposed to because if you don't know, now you know. Quoted a biggie. If you don't know, now you know. You know, that we are the originators of that. We are the creators of it. We are, you know, we are that and then some, you know. And because, you know, the bloodline tell you that. Real talk. <clears throat> yeah, man, come on, man. Yeah. So, <laughs> Booyah Tribe. 
Okay, yeah. Rest in peace. Monster Rest in just peace, passed. My bass player. Too. You know, he was my bass player at uh, when I was um, vice president at Death Row okay. and had a production. Me and him worked in the studio every day. Me, him, Darren Vegas, and Crooked Eye. Shout out, you know, to those guys. And, yeah. you know, and Butch Malls from Parliament, you know. Um, that's heavy, man. You know, I just realized that this morning and that's heavy for me, man. Yeah, you know, I, my talked to, uh, I talked to uh, Cobra. Oh, okay. We was just wedding with yeah. him. Give Goody show in L.A. Oh my God! And we were supposed to link in, and and I'm like, hey, Roger, wow, you got man, Godfather Red now, yeah, Monster Godfather Red, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and it's just it's Boom, just crazy, God, man. And, and, and Coolio, man, just man, yeah, Coolio. yeah. Well, it's no, just, I couldn't because I, I again, man, man it's heavy, I know man. I remember heavy, all around as you know what I'm saying in that mm -hmm. mix. Mm -hmm. Can't forget Booyah tried. Can't. Yeah. yeah, you can't. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you know you're there, they're there. Yeah, you're there. You're so they're there. you know what I mean? I'm sitting back like mm -hmm. they made their I'm mark. I'm a student. Yeah. They made their mark. Yeah, they made their mark because they're the only to me. I don't know nobody after that. Mm -hmm. There's no Samoan. No, you no. know Samoan hip, and they nah, sold they were, records. They, 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 they were huge. They sold records. That was huge. Yeah. What mm -hmm. you came from? Real mm -hmm. talk. You know, like because back then I was real tight with some Pomino Block Crips. You know what I'm saying? And Yousef, our cousin from Rolling Twenties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Our relative. No so doubt. So we were all hanging with each other. Absolutely. Yeah. We were all hanging with each other. Oh, that's Just the most humblest cats I ever met. music. You know what I'm saying? There are some of the most like humblest cats I ever met. Real and, niggas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got an opportunity to work with, with them because when we were trying, me and Suge were trying to do something with them. Yeah. You know, so I work with Monster every day, you know. But I used to be around Booyah Tribe all the time because they always be come to the studio and hang out with us, you know. And most some of the ho most humblest dudes, and they love music. I mean, they're, they're, they're they know music like it wasn't shit they didn't know. Yeah, they, you man, know, they, they're musicians. They're brothers. They, and they're they musicians. They brothers. And they're yeah, musicians. Yeah, so yeah, so that's why we name. link like that. They're musicians. So, you know, they're huge, they, they're huge on like music, Real you know. So it, it's really a loss, you know, because they're very talented. You know, and then to see those dudes, you know, but I, you know, what I always say, you know, because I was cool with Lisa Left Eye as well. What I always say, I'm fortunate, you know, along with my brothers, my family, to be able to work with everybody from Cocaine, Easy e Tupac, Rest in Peace, Camp G, all these different people, you know what I'm saying, Lisa Left Eye, you know, um, the Booyah Tribe, to be able to work with all these great people, Big Psych, Rest in Peace, all these people who made their mark in the industry and passed on. What I'm happy most about is that I was able to be witness and be a part of greatness. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? So their life yeah. is a celebration. Coolio, all that, I've spent a lot. Me and Coolio was label mates, a tummy boy. So, <clears throat> and um, that's what's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, like when we look at our lives, you know, to be involved with, you know, to be in the graces of the Dre's and the Snoops and the Warren G's and all these people, you know, we ain't, we ain't worried about the credit. But when you ask us, we're going to tell you, you know. So, yeah, it's heavy, man. Losing Monster is heavy. You know, yeah. losing Coolio is heavy. Losing losing my brother Cam G is heavy. All these things are heavy. Losing Pac. We all, all those things are, are, are blows. Because you got to realize, one thing everybody got to realize, when we were coming up, we were kids. Yeah. You know, we were either barely going to clubs or couldn't get into clubs and getting snuck through the back door. We were kids. When we was having hit records, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, because you was hella young, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, and yeah. And you was yeah. looking at us like, oh, them the homies, like, you know, but you could see we were kids. Yeah. You know, we wasn't like so much older than everybody who was buying those records. We may have been four or five years older than cats who was actually buying our records, you know what I mean? So, we were them, you know what I mean? So, yeah. people look at it's a different, I, I look at the game now, like how these dudes look. I think what's cool is back then we had leaders. Hmm. You know, a lot What's of these dudes up? don't have leaders. They have guys who want to do business deals with them. But Eric was a leader. Suge was a leader. You and know? you think Suge get well, a Russell bad rap? Russell was a leader. Shout out to Russell. Russell Me and Russell's Russell. cool. Good you know, Russell, yeah. Russell, 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 Russell. You think Suge get a bad rap? Or, yes. Or is, I mean, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Like, in overall, like, this dude was just, just... I think so. Yeah. A lot of people say things about Suge, but we ain't, ain't had one incident with Suge. Nah, uh -uh. mm -hmm. He respected us. Mm -hmm. We respected him. I always got paid with Suge. I always got you paid. You know what I'm saying? Like, we always Shug, got paid with Suge. Like, Shug, I, Shug, we always got paid. I mean, Suge used to drive. Suge <laughs> used to come up in there in that, uh, that 454. That's right, that K5. The big yeah, 454. he used to come there. He yeah. used to, like, man, come pick four the boys four, up. K5, my yeah. twins. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We all go wiggling mm -hmm. shit. But mm -hmm. one thing that I'm going to tell you that's crazy. <laughs> 
Yeah. That I ain't shared. Okay. We was in Rancho Cucamonga. Uh huh. And somebody pulled him off. Right. Mm. That nigga went beside the car. Pow! Pow! Mm. <laughs> Oh, shit, nigga, man. I'm like, nigga, you crazy as a motherfucker. Listen, like, listen. I'm up real quick, huh? Listen, I got so many Suge Knight stories, I can't even say it on your show. <laughs> but that's my partner, man. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I, I ain't never had a, and, we ain't never had a problem with I Suge. feel bad Not because TC, like we were talking about Tracy Carter. Yeah. You know, he kind of got caught in the middle of that and, you yeah, know, lost yeah, his yeah. life. You yeah. know what I mean? But that was, you know, let me tell you something. One thing about him, his demise, I think, was bad for Suge. The rap that he gets... Is when he exploded, you know what I mean? He really it got you know it it, it kind of got in him. Yeah, it got kind of got his head. Uh, you know yeah, what I mean? Bro. And Suge's not that. And Suge's a really he want to see it be right for you. You know what I mean? He always try to make it right for us. Yeah. You know what I mean? To, to my understanding, yeah, good intentions. Of, yeah, good great, intentions. Yeah, great intentions. Yeah, yeah, my oh, man. You know let saying. me tell you something. Like, like I miss him. You know, I miss him. I miss. I wish that him and Eric could have. To hash that out, you know, but Eric passed, and I know they would have, yeah. you know, but because all of them, you know, everybody we're talking about basically came through the doors of Ruthless, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so, mm -hmm. so yeah. and so that's what's that's what's crazy, but yeah, I think he does, I think he does because I think what Suge was exposing to all of us, like even when he was handling Mary J and Jodeci and all of that, he was just exposing them to like what was wrong, you know. When he was handling, when he was helping, trying to help Bobby get on track, or yeah. uh, Mary get on track, or you know, or Jodeci get on track, you know, um, I think he was just trying to help everybody. Even you know what what he did with you know being able to create a situation where Dre was able to go to Interscope, hmm. you know, the same thing, you know. Um, I think he just let a lot of it ego, like you just brought up, you know, ego. But we were young, yo. I mean, everybody was young. Yeah, it's easy on, to man. do that. It, I mean, it's easy to do that, man. Sure. And you talking millions of dollars. I was just about know? to say, I've yeah. never, I, man, I've never been a motherfucking millionaire and never played with that kind of money. So who's to say how okay. I would be? I can say all. Oh. But the money came. The money came. <laughs> it was an issue. I'm just being honest. What's money, the first toy? We what's the home, first boys? toy you got when the money came? Both of y'all when the shit came when it was on. Ah oh, shit! I had a. Um, <laughs> We had a Ferrari, I had a Ferrari, a toys. Sterling, yeah, already, man. and guess where I got my Sterling and Ferrari from? Huh. Ron Brown's Chop Shop yeah, with Suge Knight. Yeah, with Suge Knight, yeah. He ain't got the Chop Shop no more, so I can say that. Ron Brown from the uh, Rams, <laughs> <my> nigga. <laughs> you remember that shit? Yeah, what color was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was silver. Man. One was black. I mean, man, you, how many times you break the clutch in that motherfucker? Nigga, I didn't have that shit past three months, man. <laughs> <laughs> young and wild. Nigga, I was young. Nigga was driving wow. like a buck 25. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Hollywood. My nigga. Mash, yeah. I was young, dumb, excited. You know, not dumb in the conscience of stupid. But just when you he young, when you young, it's like, nigga, I don't give up. Nigga, what? Nigga, suck my motherfucking dick. Yeah, Shut the up. fuck up. <laughs> I, I do. You know I, what I mean? I knew it was cool because when I could legitimately go to a Mercedes, I bought an S five hundred. Huh. And you, I don't know if you, I don't know if you, you might, you're a little younger than me. I don't know if you went to uh, the uh, uh, Paradise Twenty Four. Nah, nah, nah. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. at Paradise, at Paradise, everybody would park their cars. All the ballers would park their cars in that front row. Yo, yeah. If you got there, you, you know. Like I said, Ferraris, 500s, Lambos. Hey, when I was able to get in that row, legitimately, because I could get in that row illegally, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, Trying yeah, to play yeah, OG, yeah. low key, OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I knew. And, you know, I spent that cake on that. I spent that cake on that. On that. <laughs> yeah, I spent that cake on that. When you, you, know, when you first get, get in that row, <laughs> when you first get in the game. To, but to be able to pop it's bottles like, damn. like that, you know what it's, I mean? It's, it's a power that comes with Man. this game. Like, you, 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 we done done talent shows and all that. You know, you got to go in to the L.A. County Fairgrounds to yeah, go to LA out there in Pomona. Yeah. But that's why you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. Because we was just like, nigga, we would go to Farouz at the Fox oh, Hill Mall, Fox spend Mall. like, 
bands. Like bands. these niggas talking about spinning bands, nah. But Lord Cocaine, up. Man, when we, they went to the shop, nigga, racks on racks. <laughs> oh, yeah. We you know used to hear saying? about it, nigga, when we come, nigga, and be, we come, come through Farouk's and get something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be up yeah. in there nah, buying nigga shit. Nigga like, you know what I'm saying? Like, out the big and tall bags. and all that. Yeah, yeah, you coming out there with bags, man. <laughs> but, you know? but all that, all that bad, was man. a hell of an experience. You know, when you grow older, you, you mature, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you look at life for what it is, man, because... It's not like the same set of circumstances wasn't dealt with us, like you dealt with, with Easy E or KMG, rest in peace. Yep. It's just that you know, whatever God does is what He does, and we're we just fortunate to be able to sit on this plat platform and tell y'all the real. Absolutely, yeah, because yeah, we you lived know, it. No, 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 no cap. Just, just being real. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, man. First and foremost, man, I'm very humble. Thank you to both you brothers. Seriously. Thank you, brother. Seriously. Thanks for having us. And make sure you go get that project, the Architects of G Funk. It's man. on send our site. I'll send you the uh, send the link. Thing. It's at we'll buddyboymusic.com. We'll put it up on the thing when we yes, drop, sir. man. It'll be on there to get, man. What's up, man? Real, yes, man. Because, like I say, man, it's a lot of history, you know, and I know it's a book coming, so it's like, <laughs> I'm going to ask y'all certain, hey, right. certain questions and other questions. No doubt. Yeah. I, it's, I want to ask. But man, hey, go buy that book. Go buy that fucking movie, man. Yeah. Certain things, they ain't supposed to fucking tell you, man. Mm -hmm. you now we gotta plead the fifth on that. Too many, too many motherfuckers snitching. Oh, it's, Absolutely. A, it, it's a different. We, we, we it, don't come from that era where, well, this was right down the street and that <sighs> nigga, shut up, nigga. Man, that's why. That's what's so crazy now because I understand the concept of where y'all come because even right. for me to do a podcast, mm -hmm. it was oh, nigga. What? Sit uh -huh. down. What? Talk about fuck your life. No. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Nigga, shit, if you ever look at my Instagram, nigga, you're going to think I'm a fucking man. I'm a Christian man, divine going to church every week. There you go. Like, I don't even fuck with you. Like, Ain't shit, wrong man, perception, man, perception. You reflect. So. Hey, reflection is your testimony. Come on, So man. don't trip. Come on, You know man. what I mean? We all got it. You know what I mean? It's just we got to be man enough to, to own it, you know? That's it. We have to be man enough to own what we've been through. That's and it. that's what I love about our life. You know what I mean? We we own it. You know, we know what we did, we did, you know, and it made us greater, you know, in a sense, in the eyes of the creator, you know. So I love it. You know, I don't, you know, I don't think nobody left me out of shit. Real talk. I think I did what I had to do as well as this man. I'm pretty sure he feel the same way. We did what we had to do and we lived a good life. We raised children, you know, and I got grandchildren. Kid, so I'm really excited about my life. I'm cool, you know what I mean. So I mean, yeah. Like when you think <laughs> about it, the stigma that you know, when you reach a certain age, you can't do that. That's a bunch of bullshit. Because Absolutely. Any youngster that come to me and say, "Oh, gee, you're an old head," I'm gonna be the first to be <laughs> like, "Man, thank you, homie." Exactly. You know why I'm thanking you, homie? Because I raised eight babies and as young as you, and. They're taking on the leadership and being inspired by their pops lead by example. Mm -hmm. So it take a lot to just get gray hairs to your chin yep. or to your spirit, young man. So thank you for that. You know what I mean? Because a lot too many people got the misconception that they want to be a three Pac or mm -hmm. four Pac. Yep. If Pac was here, he'd be like, nigga, I don't want to die. No doubt. And yeah. the stigma of just being you too old to do that. Nigga, this ain't basketball, nigga. Oh, you, wait. You, 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 you do that with sports, but music is everlasting. When when you got cats like Phil Mo Slim still running around here at 87 or 97 or whatever, and George Clinton running mm -hmm. around eight, 81 years old. Still doing music. So yeah. we might be in our 50s, but we really in our 20s because, hey, man, you see this man Orms, he look like Baby Lou Ferri. Yeah, <laughs> man, man. And, and I don't really want to tell you how old he is because yeah. he look like he's 30. Yeah. It's like you got to be able, what we're here to do is put out good music and change some of the landscape of the way people coming from that yeah, suppression, the way they, the way they think. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? And sometimes <clears throat> it's like a sperm cell trying to get to the egg. All of them don't play her. But for the 10 that do out of 100 million a shot yep. in a whoop wop hole, hmm. those are the people you're trying to reach. And so. I think we have a voice. So if you still have that voice and you're living on this planet, in the physical, use that voice because you never know whose life you can change. Yeah. You know, people, people symbolize stuff in the young and old, but it's like, Okay, what if I don't say anything? What if I just go play golf and don't say anything and 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 the world will never change? But what if me at my age that I'm at say something profound that changes people's lives? 
That's power. That's important. That's power. That's important. You know what I mean? And and that's why we don't stop using our voice. When me and him put together the Architects of G-Funk project, we said the biggest thing that we want to do is give people our voice again. Hmm. You know, give people a voice because we don't know who we can inspire and change. We don't know that. So when you're able to do it, you do it. Like I tell him about when I'm training, I'm a certain age, I do it because I still can do it. Hmm. Same thing with our voice. I said, Coco, we have to do it because we still can do it. And cool. until we can't do it anymore, then it's us. To, then it's up to us to pass it down to our sons. Then you can and give me my flowers. And, so yeah, then I you, can't do it no more. Then, then I'll accept. We them can't roses. physically do it anymore. Then do that. Then I'm gonna go do some play golf, uh, trade, um, buy real estate, do you know what I'm saying? When I commerce, yeah. When when I can't do it, when I can, I don't know whose life I can change. You know, real talk. Cats, think about it. Uh, if you look at a pastor, right? For instance, he can preach from when he's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Same thing as an entertainer should do. If he mm. still has that voice, he can always move people because he's the voice of the people, regardless. So, yeah. And that's the way we, you know, to put it in a <clears throat> nutshell, that's the way we always been, you know, above the law, cocaine, NWA, some of the most controversial names in the game. Yep. We didn't never think about, oh, hey, man, radio and this and that. Never. No. Our push has always been in the people. streets. The voice of the people. The people. Yeah. That's why I think... You know, us being around, there's there's a void that's missing in the streets that's that's been listening to a lot of other things that 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 really don't usher in the the authenticity of yeah. where we come from. Everything is a gimmick. Everything mm -hmm. is is a gossip. Yeah. And we didn't make music for a gossip oriented business. We made music for the streets and made music to tell a testimony to where we come from and the lives we live it's all authentic so now we're getting back to that imprint to where hey man what you see is what you get but you're going to see something that that is really going to inspire you that's really going to impact you like when people hear uncle sam's curse of no pain no gain by cocaine and they get mm -hmm. a chance to hear architects of g-funk we got songs like it's cold as ice and different other social conscious messages that I'm really hit conscious. your soul yeah. while you can shake your ass. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're getting back. We're taking the gossip out of music. architects is taking the gossip out of music and putting the music back into the, the music. streets. Yep. Yeah. That's why it's called We Have Returned. Huh. You know, with real music, real vibe, real life, real, real, the, the real life vision of life, you know, through music. You know, instead of, like you said, uh, what's the trend or what's the gimmick? You know, what's the hot style? What's this? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. it's music because regardless, we're, because music moves people. Like it's the only, an executive told me that one time, he said, you one of the, you know, as a producer, as a writer, and as an artist, he said, you're the most important person on the planet. And I couldn't understand. I was hella young. And he was like, because I want to say this to you, said, if I hear a song, it's going to take me back to my mama's house, my grandmama's house, what the sm what the food smell like, what, you know, what 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 the That's what fire. the what the sun shine like, all that through music. Not a basketball game, not a football mm. game, but music will take you back to that single moment where you can close your eyes and say, "I remember Big Mama. I remember this at Granny house. I remember Pops. I remember just from listening to a song." I do it all the time. So He's right. And I never understood that as a young writer, composer, producer, how me and him and the people that I helped produce and would impact people like that. Like, I never thought about it. Another story I had was a guy told me that you were immortal. I was like, I never thought about stuff like that. He's like, because think about it. When you're gone 100 years from now, they can put on a bubble law record. They can put on a cocaine record. They can put on records, easy E record. They can put, and they can say, oh, I'm right here rocking with Hutch. Historical we do it all the fact. time with our friends. Historical well, fact. we like, man, I'm, I'm going to go back and listen to Cab. I'm going to go back and listen to this person. I'm going to go and back. And it, makes, you it know, makes life a lot more better in the midst of the world being so fucking weird right that's now. right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah. they, they mm -hmm. can't take that from you could turn on the old song you could turn on music that's why you music escape. is the most powerful that's right element of influence yeah you know what i'm saying it's what you choose to do with it and a lot of people saying why the hood going crazy right now why are people killing each other show me i sh show show you where popular music is i'll show you where the landscape of hood the, the hood right. is mm -hmm. it's the reason why people run in the muck yeah. according to our generation you can hear fuck the police yeah. and then you can hear a public enemy mm -hmm. you can you can see a training day movie and, and and then turn around and see a Malcolm X movie it's all yeah. a reflection and they of were culture. all 
popular. It's yeah. all a reflection of culture. You Music has always been a reflection of culture. But if you got too much, too much yeah. negativity going on, all that shit is just playing on these kids all the time. Yeah. They oh, don't yeah. have a chance to even say, well, then there's another Where's side. Where's the balance? Story. Where's the Brenda's got there a baby? Where's the Where's balance? Where's the this the and that? There's no balance. It's Where's no the balance. balance? No, yeah. Nobody want to hear that shit. Hey, this is why, man, you know what I mean? That's why I'm at the end of the segment. That's why I want to go on to the other man quick segment when we start the other show and we can kind of, because... Okay. I got a lot of men, you know, just even what was just said recently okay. about fucking whole ass DJ academics. Oh yeah, yeah, that's terrible. So you know what I mean? Oh, that's For, terrible. Man, first off, man, hey, cocaine, man, let them know, man, hey, let them know where they can find projects, where they can find you, your show. It's super up. simple. We, I don't really do the TikTok thing. I only got three. I do Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, and IG. You can hit me on IG at K O K A N E underscore O G. That's cocaine underscore O G underscore. All the information is on there. Uh, you can get our new project. It's the Funk and Soul Hip Hop Band by Architects of G-Funk. You pronounce it A-L-G-F. You can go once again at BuddyBoyMusic.com. Also check out some of the stuff. I'm always on good music. Uh, I got a cutout with Bootsy Collins right now and Phantasma. It's called Rocket Ship. Uh, my daughter is also coming out. She has a show I mean, at I mean, the I mean, High. Okay. Uh, coming up, um, you know, that's the third generation. Yep. Uh, Young Columbiana, her name is Anissa Long, and uh, her project is called Young Columbiana. Cole 187 is producing on it, and okay. that's what it's about. We, we're, we're here to give the baton down, but we're here to go ahead and make you have a funky good time. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, look yeah. out for that man, yeah. Miss Long. Man, look out for it, man. Anissa Long. Uh, fire. Yeah, you can you can reach me at Mansa Musa Royal on IG. You know, um, M A N S A M U S A Royal, correct? No, R O Y A L. You know, that's on IG. You also can follow my internet magazine, 187 UM Rockboy Honeys underscore E N T. Um, that's also on IG. You can reach me on Twitter at the real code 187 UM on Twitter, uh, Master Musa on Facebook. Uh, also, follow me on all my e-commerce companies, you know, OGFashion.com. Um, That's O-G-F-A-S-H-I-N.com. You can get all the Above the Law gear. You can get music on there mm. as well. You can meet, You also can get gear from me from um, Massa Musa Royal, Royalty.com. And, um, yeah, be on the lookout for the Kokenstein album. Be on the lookout for, um, you know, Dr. Kokenstein. What's it called? Oh, 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 that's coming out <laughs> next year. Great Marcus. And, um, yeah. <laughs> that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming. You know, also, you know, stay on point for, you know, and that's on Buddy Boy. Um, also, stay on point for the, for my new streaming network that's dropping, which is MusaTV.net, which I'm launching my own television show called The Black Godfather that comes out in January. Um, yeah, and that's MusaTV.net. And um, that's a new streaming network that you can get a lot of content. And then also follow my internet magazine, which is RockBoyHoneys.com. And that's everywhere y'all can get me at. You know what I mean? And, and I'm on all of them. So, you know, I don't have a... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, and also on um, Facebook, you know, we got Above the Law. You can you can go on Above the Law Facebook and the Code 187 Facebook. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. That's a strong name. Mansa Musa, Musa, yeah. Yeah, that's a strong fucking name. Yeah, I'm name, called 187 Mansa Musa, so people don't know. But I took it, you know, the greatest, I, you know, I, yeah, the I, richest I, man I, in the world, me. you know, which yeah. is Mansa Musa. But Mansa. in Islam, you know, Mansa Musa means King Moses yeah. in Islam. But the common words mean King Warrior. So I took it from that. So it's called 187 King Warrior. Hmm. So I use it as the, as the whole monarchy. So... Tied to my name, so man, tie your shoes, man. Yeah, they go lace them up. <laughs> yeah, polish they Stacy's, lace up they Chucks. You say, you know, <laughs> man. Hey, McGlo in the West Coast, man. in the building, to, from the West to the world, from Pomona to the world, with love. You know, that's what we do it. Shout out to the town. Shout out to South Central. You know, shout out Inglewood. Shout out Compton, Watts, Long Beach, all yeah. that, and everybody in the Greater Los Angeles area in the Bay. You know how we do it, West Coast. We're in the Very building. Tough, man. Very you know. Tough. Love it, man. Go ahead and put your drop, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. You can catch me on the couch at your mama's house or at the spot. That part. You know what I'm saying? 1900. You know what I mean? Uh, I am Mr. McGlover. You know what I mean? Catch me. Off top, man. I, I like that. <laughs> we going to go ahead, man. We going to finish up yeah. this episode, man. You know what I mean? Very historical, man. Hopefully, man, we get these brothers on, man, our After Dark version. Where, you we'll know, get it. 
where we can be like, man, you feel me? Then after that, man, we know we don't go ahead and unchain their ankles and shit so they can get the hell up out of here. Yeah, hey, but now back to when the nigga yeah. guy came in the room, when the nigga said, what's up, nigga? Yeah, 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 Also, we'll be out here. And nowhere else. We got a tour, Architects of G Funk. Already. tour we're putting together okay. so we'll, we'll we'll definitely be out here mixing it up with yourself we got to go to the round table though yeah Man, shout out to, shout out the whole g funk family all of the dog pound all snoop dog mm -hmm. all you know all of a brother law doc dre lay law go mac dj chaos you know what i mean we got to do that you Say know what i'm saying warren g KMG. yeah yeah rest in peace warren g i mean uh cam g <laughs> rest in peace i was i'm gonna say easy e there we go rest in peace easy e you know and ever, and all our fallen soldiers you dig it man dig yeah. that man mm -hmm. dig that man hey once again we at the spot man and we gonna go ahead and finish it with this historical event and then man catch another one man you know we're gonna get them after the dark man you feel me that part. Right,